Considering that I wrote the title for this video before its script, I've spent a long time determining exactly why I instinctively tacked that adverb on the end, and I've come to the conclusion that the reason it's there, the reason I wanted to add it subconsciously, is not because anyone has been making a counterpoint to it, but because the truth of it was not predictable until the very closing moments of succession, and I think that is part of what makes HBO's drama a preeminent pinnacle of modern writing in television. I'm not the first YouTuber to recognise that the word shiv is a type of makeshift knife and that the Roy surname in Old French means king. Put these two together and the significance of Shiv Roy at the end of succession becomes all the more poetically clear. We can't entirely break down and anatomise her motivations because there is of course a whole lot that she doesn't say to Kendall or anyone else. And though that's perhaps partly her character, it's also because she knows her fate is sealed. She will never be CEO. But if she denies Kendall what she is increasingly convinced he doesn't deserve, her husband will be. And that, in the years to come, will have an impact on the succession of herself. Succession's real trick in the lead up to its final episode is to show us the chips before they fall. We know the people, the stakes, the battlegrounds, the spoils, but we don't know where all will land in the finale. It's the unlikely focus on Shiv in the final ten or so minutes that is the most interesting to me, and how it highlights the brilliance of the writing more than just about any other ending could. Shiv's treatment by her father, her brothers, and, to a lesser but no less significant extent, her husband Tom, is mostly with dismissal. This treatment isn't unique to Shiv by any means. Kendall dismisses Roman as a prattling fool, Roman dismisses Tom as a servile yes-man, and Logan pretty much dismisses everyone as morons, which certainly fuels the whole cycle these characters are endlessly caught up in. But in the undertow of all this disregard and ridicule, there is one running theme throughout the show that is not as overt, but is just as pervasive. That the women in the show are treated differently because they are women. I emphasise before anyone flames me in the comments that this is only rare when overt. More subtle derision and misogyny run throughout the whole show, but it's at the show's close, and really only at the show's close, that the camera pans completely on this particular elephant in the room. When Shiv takes the lectern at Logan's funeral, a moment which, unlike Kendall, is the one time she's given a chance to speak in a room of hundreds. It's this moment that the underlying truth about the nature of her father, the nature of the environment he cultivated, comes out. He was hard on women, she says, and most pertinently, he couldn't fit a whole woman in his head. The way Sarah Snook delivers this is just perfect, because it displays how much Shiv has struggled to articulate this, and yet still how blinding a truth it really is. Logan couldn't see women in the way he considered men. He used and abused people regardless of their gender, of course, but what little respect he ever did offer was rarely, if ever, given to women. He saw at any one time only a single dimension of a woman, reducing them to sex partners, business associates, a mother or a daughter, but never more than one of those things. She knows this because of how he's treated her, but also in seeing how he treated her mother, Caroline, and how he treated Jerry and Marcia too. It's no coincidence, I think, that with the finale in mind, the writers chose this most public of Shiv's moments as a precursor to the choice she would eventually make. Succession's finale could really be boiled down to, a princess can never be crowned king. There's no doubt in my mind that Shiv believed two conflicting facts simultaneously, that no man in her life would ever totally take her seriously, and that the role of CEO of Waystar could be hers if she played the game in the right way. The battle was always uphill, at least so she believed, but her final moments in the show are her realising that this was in fact not the case. It was not uphill, but more so that its conclusion was, for her at least, foregone all by happenstance of her gender. Funnily enough, I think one male character who probably gave Shiv the most genuine respect was Nate. I disliked Nate intensely as a character, mainly because I thought him a monotone slimeball too cool for school, but even though he did seduce Shiv while engaged in 
treated her sometimes like a sex object, at least he was honest in a way that most men in her life were not. He was upfront about his desire, the lack of consequences the affair would entail from his perspective, and at times told her what he thought would be better for her with what seemed genuine concern, even if that's not what her ego wanted to hear. As far as I'm able to determine, no other man gives her this consistent honesty. The show's ability to make me side with a character I would feel icky standing next to is so subtle here I didn't even realise it until the making of this video came to mind. Succession could have let the focus fall on so many of the themes that it struck such excellent chords with over the years. The corruption of power, revenge, sibling rivalry, the exorbitant wastes of concentrated wealth, but it chose instead that which is still reflected on too little in the media. How misogyny derails the lives and ambitions of women, even if they're women born into wealth and status. In highlighting this, in choosing to make this the closing comment at the end of Four Seasons, Succession also highlights how it too reflected on this too little, and that plays a strong, if not preeminent, part in what makes its ending so masterful. I want to touch on one last thing here to wrap up that requires circling back to Logan's funeral. During Ewan's eulogy, he mentions in brief something we didn't know about Logan beforehand. Of course, the true history of Logan Roy is in most cases a mystery to all of us, but the person who knew him the longest, if not the best, was Ewan. He tells that when their younger sister died of polio, Logan believed, and was perhaps so encouraged to believe, that it was his fault. It is a single line in a show of many, many that require scrutiny, but I do wonder, could this implicit guilt have impacted the way Logan would come to view women in his life? More specifically, could it have stunted his ability to ever truly connect with them? It's an aside here from what is really about Shiv, but I can't shake the feeling that this moat of an idea may be the true distant cause by means of domino effect for why Shiv ultimately had no chance to realise the reins of the power in her family's eyes, and why she made the conflicted choice that she did. Thank you for watching, and yeah, it's been a few years since my last upload. I'm not dead. I never wanted to give up making these videos with the hopes of one day really growing the channel, but after some low view counts a few years back, I wanted to wait until there was something I really wanted to share, so here it is. Um, to everyone who watched and subscribes, I understand that your time is precious, and so again, thank you. Uh, here's some more in the future. We'll see.